So why is our background image not a real background image? Well, if we think back about what we did so far, we were able to position our elements along the X axis with left and right and along the Y axis with top and bottom. Now, as we can see right here, we also need a possibility to position our elements along the Z axis. Now, the great thing is that we can do this in CSS and for that we need a new property, the so-called Z index. Now, before we apply the property, there are some important things we have to understand first. For that, let's go to our code and let's go to the package class right here. Because as I said, the Z axis position can be changed by adding a Z index. So that's the property we need. This property has different values. By default, every element on our website has a value of auto applied for the Z index. The auto value is equal to zero if we don't change anything else, but this is what you normally can assume. Auto is equal to zero. And this zero now defines the starting point from a y-axis perspective for the elements on our website. This means if you want to position an element above this package class, then you could simply apply a z-index of one, of two, of 10, of 100, it doesn't matter. If you want to position an element below this class, then you can add minus one, minus 100, and so on. I think you saw the pattern. But, here comes the but, adding a z-index to elements which don't have any position property applied, and by that I mean a position property with a value different from static, for these elements, the z-index doesn't have any impact. So I could add z-index 100 right here, if I go back and reload the page, still the background image would be on top of all the other elements. This means this default style for the elements without any position property is just there and it's important to know that it's basically equal to zero. But if you want to change it, you have to apply the position property. Now the good news is that we have an element, actually two elements, with the position property applied and one will be the background image right here. So let's get rid of the Z index right here on the package because it doesn't have any effect. And now we add the Z index right here to our image. As I told you, the default value for the elements is zero. And as the background image should be behind these packages we have, so behind these default elements, we could add minus one for example. If my logic was correct, then the background image should now be behind these packages. Let's go back and reload the page to see if this worked. Yes, it did. And this makes sense, right? Because now we said that the z-axis, so the z-axis value defined by the z-index should be smaller than one, minus one in our case. Therefore, it should be displayed behind these packages. If we would add a z-index of one though, right here, like that, so we changed it for the background class again. Then we could see that the background image is again on top of our packages and on top of the navigation bar. Can you see it? If I add a Z index of zero right here, then the background image is on top of the packages. This makes sense, right? Because with that, both have the same Z index, but we learned already that by adding position fixed, the element is taken out of the document flow, well, and therefore displayed above the existing elements. This is clear. But why does the Z index of zero lead to the situation that this navigation bar is displayed on top of the background image? But adding a z-index of 1 or 100, it doesn't matter in that case, leads to the situation that the background image is on top of that navbar. Well, let's change it back to 0 and think about the default value of the z-index for this background class. Because it's the same as for the normal elements. The default value for this z-index is also auto or 0 in that case. And the same thing is also true for our navigation bar. We can find the navigation bar right here in the shared CSS file. So here our main header has the position fixed declaration applied with a default z-index of auto or zero. This means if I would now change the z-index right here, let's say to five, and at the same time apply a z-index of six, so above five right here, and of course save both files, 
and we load the page, you can see the background image is still on top of the navbar. If I would add a Z index of seven, so higher than the value applied for the packages and we load, it would be above it. If we change it back to our default value, which would be zero for the packages and for the navigation bar, we can see that we have the default behavior. So the Z index doesn't drive this behavior. What drives this behavior though, in case we have two positioned elements with the same Z index, is simply the order in the HTML file. So if we go to our index HTML file in the packages folder, we can see that the background is the first element and after the background comes the header. Therefore, the header comes later in our code and therefore the header is displayed above our background. It's as simple as that. And with that, we now understood the core concept of the Z index. The only thing we have to do right now is of course, to go back to the packages file and add a Z index of minus one to position it behind our packages like that. And as we can see, everything is still working. But as I said, with that, we understood the core concept of changing the Z axis position with that Z index. There is one other important concept, the stack in context. I will have a separate video about that later in this module. But for the moment, let's just be happy with that Z index. And as we are so happy with it, why don't we just take the chance and use our knowledge we have so far to also position and create a badge right here. Because I said in the beginning of this module that I would like to have a recommended badge. So in this package right here. Let's see how this works in the next video.